Hey folks, Doug here from Run for the Hills. I'm out camping on the west coast of Vancouver Island, one of my favorite camping spots up on Jordan Ridge, right beside a river. Uh, been here before and done a video in this spot, but that's not why I'm here today. As a matter of fact, I was just coming up for R&R, &R, wasn't planning on doing a video, but since we're up here, why not? Give me something to do. What I thought I'd do this time around is just have a quick run over of my Jeep, uh, a little bit about its history, some of the stuff I've had done to it, and some of the things that I take camping with me on a regular basis, things that I use all the time. All right, and that's all going to start right now. So my Jeep is a 2013 Wrangler four-door Rubicon. Uh, I bought it new. It's not my first Jeep. I've had quite a few. I've had a 77 CJ7. I've had an 81 CJ5. I've had a 92 YJ. And I had a 2008 uh, four-door Rubicon just like this one. But uh, when 2013 came up with a new engine, I uh, decided to trade it in and I got this guy right here. It's been a great machine. Boy, I love this Jeep. I always have. Uh, I have no intention in getting a new one. I know a lot of guys, uh, they can't resist. I can. This uh, Jeep is sticking with me till the end. You can keep them running for a long, long time, and that's what I plan to do. As I said before, I love this machine, and I've had a lot of fun making it into the machine that you see here. It was literally stock for uh, most of its life up until about a year ago. But I had put in a kitchen, which we'll take a look at, and also um, rooftop tent, which I now have a new rooftop tent. Uh, but all the weight from all that stuff was bashing up my brakes, and there was a laundry list of things wrong with it related to weight that I had to get sorted out and this year was the year to do it. I probably spent about $10,000 on suspension refit, but man, and tires. And it's uh, it's a whole new machine. It's better than new. I had uh, an old man EMU two and a half inch lift put in and they did custom work on the springs in the back. They took the spring mounts and they put them up higher. Uh, they had to do that because after they put the lift in, it was still, there was a lot of pressure still, it was kind of sagging at the back, so they had to do some custom work back there, which included getting larger springs that didn't come with the lift. So uh, once that was all taken care of, great, but I needed ball joints and all kinds of stuff. Brand new tires, got all new 34 inch tires, it was running on the stock Rubicon tires. And uh, basically they said you need light duty truck tires, that these, um, the ones that came out of the factory were not and he said they weren't even safe for the amount of weight that I had on the Jeep that they should be uh, uh, replaced. And so I did replace them. Um, West Shore Spring, uh, they just did a great job. Uh, they did a lot of work. They did it fast. I had a bit of a problem with steering afterwards. So it was really weirdly wonky. They had to order some front and rear adjustable control arms. Uh, those weren't cheap, but what a difference. When they put those in, couldn't believe it. It, would, it drove and still does drive better than it did when I first got the Jeep. Very, very happy with that. So all those things put together satisfied my need for having a truck that can go pretty well anywhere. And I'm not a heavy off-roader. I don't take a lot of risks or bash the Jeep around, but just a lot of rough roads and uh, with plans to go up to uh, the Yukon and whatnot this summer, I wanted to make sure that I had dependability on my side. Well, here's the inside of the Jeep. And make no apologies for how messy it is right now because I am literally camping. Uh, the front seats. I've never liked Jeep seats that much. I don't think they really grab onto me that well. But um, I got the leather ones when I got this 2013. 
and they were quite a bit better than the cloth ones, at least I thought. And I got a couple of mounts up here for holding the uh, Osmo Action camera and my phone, etc. And uh, I got a baseball bat down there. Really, I just use that for hitting rocks. And uh, yeah, so let's take a look in the back. Okay, so these seat covers I bought, these Smitty Belt seat covers, I was skeptical at first because I heard that um, the uh, mounting or the the uh, elastics underneath the seats would break. But I've put my fat can into this thing thousand times <clears throat> and it's never broken. But uh, they are really great for storing all your little stuff. And uh, I have tons of little things. Some of them don't have anything in them right now because I'm camping. But uh, these are just great. They were a fantastic investment, I thought. I just keep uh, the 60% seat down and I use that to um, put my uh, uh, table on and things like that. And I've got my kayak back here. And uh, basically there's room for everything. Uh, there's all my camera gear on here. And uh, I put the solar up there. That's where the solar goes. Ready light cover goes here. And uh, if I bring rifles, which I have this time, they slip nicely into the sides. Also my ladder for my tent. It slips right in here perfectly like it was made for it. It's just great. And um, here's my propane tank. I use that for the scottle. Sometimes um, I don't feel like pulling it out, so I've got the little bottles too. Uh, they definitely last long enough for a trip. This is the uh, Pentastar engine that came with this Jeep. Uh, it's totally stock, 3.6 liter uh, Pentastar engine, I think 2013, which is this year um, uh, Jeep. I believe that it was the first year they put that in there, and it's never given me any problems at all. I've never thought that Jeeps went fast enough or were powerful enough, but this is what they've given us. And uh, I've had no complaints. I've got about 55,000 kilometers on it, and uh, I love it. Never had any real problems. So this is my dual battery system. Let's take a quick peek at that. Very simple setup. So when I originally considered putting in a dual battery system in my Jeep, I was a little worried because Everything I saw on the internet that could get me to my goal uh, was very, very expensive. But after a little research, I realized I didn't need any of that stuff. And uh, my friend is an auto electric guy, and uh, he helped me out. Uh, I had to order the batteries and the dual battery tray. But when they came, he tore all that stuff out, put in a set of new cables and a solenoid, and that was it. Now I've got a second battery that I run everything with which is fantastic. I've been using it for maybe uh, two and a half years now. I've never had a problem, not even a blip. As far as the batteries go, of course, those are great. Ba Ultima batteries are great. And I've never had any complaints with this either. So, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. The only thing that kind of pees me off sometimes is these tend to pop out occasionally. So I'm, now I'm a little bit more careful with them. And uh, so that doesn't happen. So I use my uh, floppy panel. Uh, solar panel and it just goes wherever sitting over here behind me right now in the sun and my fridge and phones and everything I need camera gear etc has all run through that never had a problem and believe me I saved hundreds and hundreds of dollars just buying a new set of cables and a solenoid and not spending all that money on one of those uh, genius systems that are, I don't know how much they cost, so I'm not even going to say, but hundreds of dollars. So I'm very happy with that. I'm glad I did it. This is uh, my Ferretti tent. I've shown it already in other videos. I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at that. But basically, uh, if you've probably heard of a roof nest, I think they're the most famous. It's exactly the same tent as that. And uh, basically, there's about four or five different companies that use the same tent they're all built in the same factory uh i'm finding it to be a lot of fun my other one was a uh, tapui it was quite large and it opened over the back and it gave the back of the uh, jeep where you cook kind of a nice uh awning over the back really but it was cumbersome and big and since i do this mostly on my own i needed something that would go up and down fast 
and I can shut this and open it in a minute, which is fantastic. I'm very happy with it. It's a lot of fun. Um, it has a rain fly too, but it doesn't do anything. So I just keep it rolled up. It's kind of useless, but a lot of fun. I run the, uh, oh, here's my garbage picker upper. I run the uh, Sun Seeker awning. And I got that at the same time as I got the Rhino Rack. Now I've got the Rhino Rack backbone system. And uh, that's where it's tied into the inside of your uh, Jeep. So it gives it a lot of stability. Can't really see it too well, of course. It's um, got stuff all over it right now. But I've, I thought that was a really good investment considering I was carrying a lot of weight up there. Now it's not quite so heavy, so I don't really need it. But not going to give it back. <laughs> Suits its purpose just fine. All right, and uh, what else we got around here? We have the kitchen. And uh, again, I'm living in this right now for the next couple more days. And uh, so it's lived in. And I'm doing some shooting, as you can see. Got my uh, cowboy guns here, kind of fun. All right. Um, this kitchen is Overland Kitchen. Uh, his name's Al. He works uh, here in Victoria. Uh, and he, uh, I'm not going to say he invented these, but this particular one he did. And you can order them if you look online to Overland Kitchen. You get it from the States, though. So I was a little surprised that the... Uh, cost was in American funds however so it was a little more than I thought and that's okay it's been very very useful okay, this is my ARB fridge and you can't outdo it it's really been a performer just great now do your research before buying one of these because there are cheaper options out there that are really good uh, it's a uh, uh, it's an industry that's full of all kinds of really great stuff so I don't know I, I wouldn't be able to tell you which was better or which was worse. I do know that I've had this ARB fridge now for uh, two and a half years. And it's great. It's got lots of space. Um, yeah, I just, I have nothing bad to say about it. It's such a great fridge and it fits right on this slider. If you get one of these, you've got to have a slider. It's so much easier to access it. Isn't that nice? Beauty. I love this fridge. Keeps my liquor cold. I'm kidding. Keeps my food cold too. I just wanted to note regarding the kitchen. Um, when it comes in, this one is built specifically for our Jeep. So you, if you can see that, uh, it's slanted so that it, your seats, when they're up, they practically rest right up against it. So it's slanted to fit your seats. Uh, it's a pretty good fit. These will fit in any small SUV. It doesn't have to be a Jeep, but they were specifically designed, particularly at this end, and the width of the kitchen itself for the Jeep. Wait, just a little hint. If you look right up where the potty is there, the blue thing, um, if you have a floppy panel like me, it slides up inside, like between that uh, crossbar and the ceiling and I just have a couple of little strap things that holds it in. It's a great place to store it. So that's just a little storage tip. And this is my water storage. I have two of these. I only have one with me this time. Uh, it works great. I use a siphon. I'll show that in another video. It's sitting right back there. Just put a little siphon in there, shake it up and down and it fills up your pot. It works great. This is my tailgater table. This thing is great. You can see it fits right over the tire. And you don't need to have this strut right here. You don't need to have that. Without that down, it still supports itself just by virtue of the way it's designed to, to, uh, to be held on the tire. 
Uh, this is great because if you have dogs that are always on leash and they're running back and forth, they can't tip your tire, or sorry, they can't tip your table over. It's really great and it takes quite a bit of weight. So I use this all the time. If I'm really simple camping though, I don't bother pulling it out. But if I'm somewhere for a few days, I definitely use it. So this is my ready light. First time I saw this on Coyote Works, I had to have it from Free Spirit Recreation. This solar panel powers this big light and the four little lights. And the magnets I stick all around my Jeep. They come off and they stick to the Jeep. And two of them I bring upstairs. They have a little hanging thing on them. They have a hook. And you just hang that from wherever you want. This is a great little system. It all comes apart and goes in a bag. And uh, it does take up a little space. This is the bag just for the big unit. But then there's a longer bag for the legs, etc. But this thing has been great. I've had it a few years. And fantastic. It's just cool. I know there's a lot of lighting options out there now. Tons of them. But take it from me. This is reliable as it gets. Now let's move on to the Helio shower. Now listen, if you spend more than one day out in the woods in the heat and you don't have a river to jump in, which I currently do, I'm right beside one, um, you need one of these. They clean dishes and they can keep you clean too. Or your little pet if they need to get cleaned off too. So I'm holding the uh, Osmo here. So uh, all you do is you push on that guy make a little pressure and then take a little hose boom 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 now the neat thing about this is that if you leave it out in the Sun not only does the water warm up but a lot of pressure is created because uh, it's getting hot so it expands the air inside expands and so you don't, if it's in the sun, you don't really even need to squish that. You've got power, not power, but uh, you've got uh, uh, air force to get this water out of there onto your dishes the way you want. Helio. Um, don't get a cheap imitation because they won't last. I've had this thing, again, probably two years now. It's great. It's very reliable. Um, I would store it with everything open in it though because I would imagine that you could get mold in this thing. I just got that there because that's concrete. So yeah, I'd get one of these. Get them on Amazon. They're not that cheap, but they're worth every penny. Here's something not everyone likes to talk about. Mind you, I've seen some videos lately where everyone seems to be putting out videos about how to go poop in the woods. And that's fine. Sounds like fun. Um, anyways, this clean waste portable toilet is fantastic. Wow. I saw this on Venture Four Wheel Drive and I had to have it too. Not just because it's a toilet, and believe me, it's a great toilet. You just dig a hole or put a bag in there, sit underneath it, do your business, you're all good. But when you're not using it, it's a fantastic footstool or a coffee table. I use it for both. All the time and those legs they just close up and they're flat and you just slide it in like a little briefcase what an excellent piece of machinery if you get it you're going to enjoy it you just dig a hole put it over top do your business please dig a deep hole that's all i ask i'm not even going to say what this is for but i don't drink orange juice so now you know what it's probably for all right, so um, a lot of people asked, hey, Doug, what do you do with all your unmentionables uh, when you go out camping? Um, what happens with all those things? Well, I'd like to introduce to you bathroom in a box. So all my unmentionables that I take with me camping, they're not even unmentionables. I was just kidding. Uh, they just go in this simple little box. Keep everything in it. For brushing teeth and having headaches and 
shaven if I feel like it, all those things. They're all there if I want them. Bathroom in a box, that's what I call it. Now, you might think this is weird, but at home, this is it. So, we used to live in a house with more than one bathroom. Now we live in a condo with one bathroom. And so, since I go regularly on camping trips and need to collect all this stuff to go on the trip, I decided why not just leave everything, put it under the sink, and then my wife can have all the rest of the room in the bathroom. Wow, I'm quite a catch. Anyways, so that's why I do bathroom in a box. Everything is right where you need it. Boom, just like that. Lift that lid. Boom. You're good to go. Well, thanks for coming on this little Jeep walk around with me. I'm Doug. You're watching Run for the Hills. We'll see you next time.